uh, hi all in this example we mainly uh, talk about the evaluation part so in the evaluation part we are mainly going to see about the confusion matrix so we have uh, by using the confusion matrix actually you know we will be able to um, identify or s understand um, certain things the accuracy a precision a recall so these are the major things which we will be able to identify identify from the confusion matrix so in the confusion matrix what i wanted to uh, tell you is that it's just a performance measure and it's a performance measure for the classification problem okay uh, and here you know we are actually taking only two classification i mean like a binary classification either two, two or one but it could be actually more than two classes also and you can also use confusion matrix and uh, basically confusion matrix are basically used for uh, two classes binary classification but it can also be extended to multi classes multi class classifications so when you look at here uh, this is the uh, diagram which you will see about uh, what a uh, how a confusion matrix will look like so you will have the actual values you will have the predicted values and this is your true positives false positives uh, false negatives true negatives okay so now we will just have a look about you know what is this all this true positive false positive false negative and true negative so this is an example of the confusion matrix so where you could see that see there is a uh, data which is actually given to you right so here when you look at here okay so true negative okay so true negative uh, is nothing but true negative that means um, it is not true i mean you are actually telling at a male person and saying um, uh, and saying you are not pregnant and that is true okay so the result is actually negative and that is actually true itself okay but when you look at here the true positive you know, you're actually pregnant and the doctor is also telling you that you are pregnant okay so that is actually true positive that means it is positive and which is true as well uh, now comes uh, false positive so what would be false false positive false positive is the positive is false that means it is that whole thing is not true so you're looking at the person and saying like you are pregnant that's not possible right so that is false positive that means the positivity that you are telling about you are you're telling that it is positive that is wrong now you know you are to a pregnant lady you are telling like you are not pregnant okay so that could be the case of false negative that means you are saying it is negative which is false so there should be one way that you should actually keep this interpretations in your mind because otherwise you will get confused about the confusion matrix that's the beauty on the confusion of your confusion matrix so true positive is that so now let's come to the definitions so true positive is that you predicted positive okay you predicted positive and it's true okay so you predicted positive and it's true right and then true negative means what you predicted negative and it's true so this is the easiest way that you could actually keep the understanding of the confusion matrix in your mind false positive it is positive but it is false you predicted positive you predicted positive and it is false and here you predicted negative and it is false so this is the way so try to have one understanding because there are different type of interpretations in the internet but try to keep as one interpretation in your mind and stick on to it and in that all this false false values are called as type 1 error and type 2 error because they are the errors right they are the actual the errors you are telling positive but it is false you are telling negative it is false right so these two are actually errors so in that you will start with the positive so positives are called as a type 1 errors and then false negative are called as a type 2 errors okay so this is also very important in so many different uh, scenarios like uh, uh, recommendation systems you will and uh, the you know when you when you take it to lot of applications it is very very important okay so how you will uh, you understood about uh, what the confusion matrix is now once you understood what is uh, uh, you know uh, the accuracy then it is very important for us to identify like what is how is it actually calculated 
So, accuracy is calculated as true positives plus true negative. That means, all the truths divided by whole of your data. I mean, like true positives plus true negatives, false positives plus false negatives. Uh, now, this is actually the precision. So, in precision, you are actually telling about how many, how many of the correctly predicted cases actually turned correct, actually turned to be positive. So, how will you actually take that true positive, positive and it is true. So, they are nothing but the correctly predicted cases, right. You are saying that they are positive and they are true, right. So, these are the positive cases, right. I mean like the correctly predicted cases. So, in that actually how many turned to be positive itself, right. So, how will you actually do that? So, true positive divided by true positive plus false positive, right. So, this is nothing but uh, uh, precision. Now, the second one is basically like uh, this is your recall. So, in recall if you see how many of the actual positive cases we were able to predict correctly with our model, like right? So, how the model was able to predict you know actual positives. So, you got you know so and so number of positives, but in that how many of her were actually positive. So, which are all the actual positives, actual positives are true positive, positive and it is true, right. And also the false negatives are also true. That means, you said it is negative, but it was false. That means, it is true, right. So, these are your, you know, denominator where you will consider both the true positive and the false negative upon the true positive, right. Now, there is one more thing called F1 score. So, an F1 score is it's actually called as a uh, harmonic mean of precision and recall. Okay. So, there is a specific formula for it. So, F1 is equal to 2 into 2 into okay, it is here then precision into recall divided by precision by recall. So, here the F1 actually uh, if you have any extreme value score or something like that it is actually nullified or balanced to some extent. Okay. So, here when F1 and Fp and Fn are equally costly. Um, then you know you have to take up the call for F n score. So, F n score will be effective if both of them have equal values kind of equal values or if you are adding more data does not effectively change the outcome or the true negative is actually high. True negative is high means uh, it is negative and it is true. So, if you have true negative which is actually high then all these cases you can go for F n score. Now, uh, the other thing which you have to identify and understand is that see confusion metrics can also be used for multi class classification, right. So, here there is a small instance actually which is actually given to you. You are it is about you know uh, how many uh, I mean like confusion metrics for the where we have to predict a particular person is basically um, basically loves uh, Facebook or Instagram or chat, Snapchat the more, ok. So, Facebook is here, then act, uh, uh, what is that uh, Instagram is here and Snapchat is here and you are given with the actual values and the predicted values. So, in such a case how will you actually identify the accuracy of this. So, when you look at here, so say the TP cell 1, TP cell 5 and cell 9 these are nothing but the uh, you know the True, true positives. I will show you how it is. So, when you look at here, you could say that the true positive, right. So, this is the true positive for the Facebook that means cell 1. Both Facebook, you know, he, the actual value is also pos, uh, positive and the predicted value, this one predicted value is also positive. Now, for the Instagram, which is the one for that, then uh, here it is T5. So, actual value is positive and the predicted value is positive. For the Snapchat, this is actual value is positive and predicted. So, T the cell number 9, right. So, this is nothing but your true positives. Then comes uh, false positive. So, false positive is that say false positive that means positive is false, right. So, how will you actually do that? These are the false positives that means say um, actually it is a, a false positive. So, positive it is actually positive, but you told negative, right that is the meaning of it. So, that is this one. So, Instagram. So, you told it is negative, right, but it is actually Facebook, right. So, these two cells. So, 2 plus 3, right, cell. And what about this one for the for the Instagram? It is 4 and 6. For Snapchat, it is 7 and 8, right. Now, true negative. 
how will you identify through negative for facebook okay so you can identify the true negative that means it is negative uh, negative and it is actually true right that is nothing but so that you will identify the best way for doing is that you know you will actually exclude the facebook row so say if you are excluding this one so five six eight nine right and say if you are taking the snapchat you are excluding the snapchat row so it is one two four five right and then if you uh, take the uh, what is that uh, for the instagram basically it is one and uh, then uh, one and basically the six and eight nine right so this is what it will uh, sorry not one um, yeah yes one actually three and eight and nine so these are the cells which will come in the picture so this is all about the true negatives so they are actually negative and it is actually true as well okay uh, so that is nothing but the true negatives and then comes the false negatives in the false negatives where is it a uh, false negatives basically uh, if you look at this uh, one this is only kept as positive and you have uh, these two negatives right so for the instagram it will be two and eight and for the snapchat it will be and six right so these are the ways in which you can actually calculate uh, the for the multi-class classification this is just an example and you can actually come out with your own way with multiple this thing okay so this is just to tell you that confusion matrix basically tells you the accuracy the precision and recall of your classifier okay accuracy of your classifiers can be actually evaluated by using the confusion matrix but in it is not just accuracy it is even more you can also consider the even get the true positives true negatives false positives false negatives so if we have all these values we can actually calculate the precision recall f1 measure there are so many other revaluation metrics so they are called as actually specificity okay um, so all these things could be calculated with the help of you know fpr I mean like false positive rate so you can actually you know there are so many things you know uh, which you could actually calculate with the help of this particular values and it can also be extended to calculate to the uh, multi-class classification now coming back to our example okay so this is an example by this uh, um, scalon and when you look at here you are actually uh, importing the confusion metrics from scalon package is an sql on library from there you know uh, in the library in this particular package we have got this confusion matrix and again you have something called classification report so it will give you a detailed report about the classification so just imagine that you know you're just directly giving the values like this so normally we will not be giving the values directly like this we will be actually you know taking the values directly from the operations and then you are actually using the confusion matrix and you are actually giving the actual predicted and also the labels and uh, see here you are actually making the uh, you are printing everything by uh, giving actual predicted label everything and uh, then you are actually printing them okay and uh, you can also make a classification report by giving actual predicted and the label 0 and 1 and 0 that means you are either predicting 1 or 0 that's why you are getting this and you can print the classification report so when you look at the classification report so these are the values this is a confusion matrix which you are actually getting so this would be the output values which you will get now apart from that you will also get a detailed report like precision recall f1 and support support we will see later and uh, so uh, i mean like even the accuracy micro macro average weighted average all those information so when you look at here so one so so you are getting a detailed uh, report about the values and the percentage of the precision recall and f measure etc right so this is the beauty of uh, you know, confusion matrix and now we can also see another example which is actually using the stock market analysis okay so for that we are basically using uh, um, pandas okay and we are actually mounting everything from the uh, google drive itself and when you look at the data set basically uh, it's a combination of the world news and stock price which is actually forked from Kaggle and there are 25 columns okay of the two top news headlines for each day 
and the data is basically from uh, 2008 to 16 right and also when you look at the data you will have uh, the data frame you have date and label label is your dependent feature I mean like this is the one which we are actually going to um, uh, use it for classification and uh, so the class 1 is basically stock price increased and the class 0 is basically stock price stayed the same or decreased so it's like either so you are actually getting the data and then when you are printing when you look at the data here you could see that you have your date and label so this label is the one which will actually tell you whether it is negative or positive whether the stock market increased or not and these are all the different type of the so like that you have 25 right see here okay, so you have 25 columns which will help you to decide upon this label so these are all your uh, independent features and this is your dependent feature and uh, now uh, so you know how your data look like now you have to take your data so you have to split your data right as training and testing so for the easiest way what we are actually doing is that so this is nothing but don't worry about this value this value is actually about uh, date so 1 1 2015 so you are taking all the data less than 1 1 2015 as your first training data and uh, greater than that you know you are actually taking it as test data so this is how you actually you are actually doing so you are converting it into a data frame and now we need to find out the uh, data features I mean like the features right so for that what we are actually doing is that we are actually removing the we are actually first doing the pre-processing part so for the pre-processing part uh, we are simply doing the we are taking the data and slicing it right and then we are actually uh, removing the A to Z capital A to Z and spaces and everything and uh, then uh, we are actually uh, for the ease of access instead of all this top 1, top 2, top 3 and all you are actually changing its index as 1, 2, 3, 4 etc up to so 0 up to 24 I guess right 24 you will be maintaining the index right so you are just ma making that index for the ease of use ok so it is all the same so but uh, you have your sorry you have your label I mean like you are just converting that uh, uh, top one top two so this is this is how your uh, columns were looking like uh, so instead of top one top two you are just changing it to 0 1 2 3 etc up to 24 right and uh, uh, why it is a very important step is that when we are trying to create the bag of words or tf idf mo model these models would uh, if the word starts with a capital letter and the small letter then it will consider that as two different uh, ones not this is not talking about the index but talking about the uh, why we have to convert it into smaller letters and everything you know I mean like the pre-processing is very very important because your count and your data inaccuracy will be more now uh, the next one is that we are trying to combine all the headlines that means uh, based on the index so that means that say uh, in, in the zero right in the zero whatever be the data you have okay you are going to convert everything say hindrance operations to extract blah 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 scorecard this everything you are going to convert I mean like together you are going to make it into one so when you look at it you know you will get one single big uh, you know data in the zero so I mean like when you look at it there is only one row so you are actually combining everything okay you are combining everything and uh, then what you are going to do is that um, yeah then what you are going to do is that uh, uh, you are just joining it with the help of uh, um, spaces so the first one will be a hindrance to the operation etc you know it just just goes like that and then next one is that you know you have to apply the vectorizer we are using vectorizer we all know this in order to convert to a number right because we need everything as numbers here for working with the so we are actually using the count vectorizer for that and we have that particular function which is available in sklearn and that too in the feature extraction dot text then the classifier that we are going to use is actually a random forest classifier so it is actually an advanced model for your decision tree classifier right so you are using the count vectorizer so in the count vectorizer see here we are actually giving the n-gram range as 2 2 ok and uh, here in the train data set you are actually uh, fitting I mean like applying the model upon the headlines ok 
So there are different type of you know classifier models. So one is actually decision tree, and for random forest, both of them are actually hierarchical models. So when you look at here, so hungry or not, yes. What will do? Then you will check whether is it a midday. Yes, you will eat lunch. I mean like that's all. So I mean like based on the S or no. So these conditions are basically this tree is formed in such a way that. you have to set the route then you have to set the conditions in such a way that you reach your final destination so this is one tree like that if you have you know say i can also have uh, is it a midday as my route right so or i can have is it 6 pm as my route so there are different uh, permutations and combinations for this whole tree itself right so if i consider all the permutations and combinations of this tree and then calculate the accuracy and then come out with a better result then that is called as a random forest so it's a forest it's a collection of trees so uh, these are the two different uh, things so in that here we are actually using the random forest classifier so la in random forest classifier so you are actually giving the estimators don't worry about the estimators because this uh, basically depends upon the dependent values and the independent values and everything entropy just understand that it is the error and this is the kind of the number of the trees that you have want and you are actually fitting the model upon the training data set with the label and then you are actually predicting see here predicting for the test data set so you will be using the test underscore transform you are actually transforming the particular values into vector and then you are actually using the predict predict function so predict is basically for evaluation purposes okay and uh, you are making the model predict something else predict the test data set right now uh, you are actually importing the classification report confusion matrix accuracy score everything from the sklearn matrix and uh, if you look at the uh, matrix you know confusion matrix so you are actually passing the test label and the predictions you are printing the matrix then accuracy score you are actually printing then the classification report you are printing so this is your matrix basically okay and this is the accuracy is almost about 8.85 so that means 85.9 almost 86 percentage of accuracy for this particular random forest model and this is your classification report which gives you a detailed identification about what should, what is the precision recall f measure etc right so this is nothing but an example for the confusion matrix so this just gives you a clear idea about how your model will work upon a particular data okay but it does not stop over there it also gives you a little more extended details about what all are the number of the false positives false negatives true positives true negatives how the precision is about what is the recall is about so because this uh, matrix is really important when you actually take it forward to a uh, higher level of uh, you know transform and based learnings which we will see in the next classes like you know the bert and the bart kind of you know there you know we will learn about a little bit more beautiful uh, uh evaluation matrices like blue score you know rog and everything so where so this is actually the base of it okay so only when you understand about this uh, basic evaluation matrices matrix correctly you will be able to build upon that for the next level of uh, algorithms okay so hope you understood how this confusion matrix works and if you have any doubts or anything like that always get back to me thank you so much